In this video, we're going to go over some of the most important population math equations you need to know for AP Biology, and we'll do some practice problems. If you want a fast AP Bio math review, make sure you use the link in the video description to check out more resources on other equations that might be used on the AP Biology exam. In this video, we're going to go over population growth, exponential growth, and then carrying capacity equations, also known as logistic growth. So what do these equations look like? Well, here are our first two, the equations for population growth and exponential growth. You don't need to memorize these for the AP Biology exam. They will be on a formula sheet provided to you, but you need to be able to recognize them and kind of understand what they mean. So scientists like to measure communities in a variety of ways, and we can use mathematical models to investigate population growth patterns. With an exponential growth model, we assume that there's unlimited resources for the population. This is usually contrasted with the logistic growth model, or the model where we use carrying capacity. It's unlikely you'll see a problem on the AP Bio exam that asks you to just calculate population growth alone or exponential growth alone. More than likely, you'll have to apply ideas behind these two equations. We'll be able to recognize exponential growth as a type of growth due to a lack of limiting factors or when our reproductive or growth rate far exceeds the death rate of a population. But if you're looking on our formula sheet, you'll see that all of these variables are given to you as well as the equations. So you'll be able to recognize these pretty easily on the AP Biology exam. If you're looking at a graph, exponential growth kind of looks like this. Sometimes we'll see bacterial populations that can grow like this, but most populations in nature will reach carrying capacity eventually. We reach carrying capacity when the reproductive rate equals the death rate. Usually when a population is early in growth, there's not gonna be too many density dependent limiting factors that are gonna limit our population size. But as our population size increases, there'll be fewer resources for the growing population. Then we start to see the logistic growth pattern. We start to see the graph level off at the carrying capacity, which is the number of individuals that a particular environment can support. Usually this will stay the same as long as environmental conditions stay the same. We might see a little fluctuation here, but it's really slow as compared to our logistic growth as it approached the carrying capacity. Availability of resources, either biotic or abiotic, is going to be one of the biggest influencers on population growth. So here's an example of a type of problem you might see without having to do any math at all. This question just gives us a random population and shows us how the population is growing over time. In this graph, you'd have to estimate where the population's growth rate is the highest. Well, it's going to be at a certain point in time. Can you see where the slope is the greatest for this particular population? That's where the growth rate will also be the highest. Let's get into some actual math using some of these equations and try to apply it. A population of 350 South American poison dart frogs live in an ecosystem with a carrying capacity of 500 frogs. What is the maximum population growth rate if the population grows to 388 in one year? So before I go and explain this problem, go ahead and pause the video and try to work it out on your own. See what you're able to solve by yourself. All right, so we know a couple of factors already. We know the population size, or n, is 350. We also know the carrying capacity, or capital K, that's 500. So knowing these variables, and knowing that we're looking for our max, or our maximum population growth rate, we have to pick from our equations. Well, since we're involving the carrying capacity, we can probably go ahead and think about using the carrying capacity equation. So let's stick with that one. Our first step is gonna be looking at that growth in one year. We started with 350 frogs, and we have grown to 388. So 388 minus 350 is 38. That's our growth for the first year. But we want to find out the maximum population growth rate, or our max. So now let's fill in the other variables that we know. 350 is n, and k is 500. So now we're just going to do some simple math. And after we multiply 350 by this value here, we'll divide this total value by 38. That's going to give us around 0.361. Try not to round too much until you're at the end of the problem. Let's do another one. We have a newt population of 150, and it has a maximum annual rate of increase of 0.7. If the carrying capacity of the pond is 700 for this species, what is the expected population size after one year? So go ahead and pause the video and try to figure out on your own as much as you can before you continue. All right, so we know the population size currently, and that's n our n value is 150. It's already given us the R max, and that's 0.7. And we also know the carrying capacity, 700. So now, what are we gonna to use to calculate the rest of our values? Well, let's bring back our carrying capacity equation again. We can go ahead and plug in our known variables. So if our R max is 0.7, and our population is 150, we're gonna plug in K and N, wherever it goes, in our equation. Now we're gonna finish the rest of our equations. If you subtract 150 from 700, then divide it by 700, 
that'll give you roughly 0 0.7857. We multiply these values all together, and that gives us around 82.5. So is this our expected population size after one year? Take a second to gut check all of your population math responses. There's a few problems here. One, we know this population is increasing, and it hasn't reached our carrying capacity yet. So why would the population be 82.5 after one year? Our population started at 150. So what we need to do is think about what the question is asking exactly. What is the expected population size after one year? So we take 150, our original population, and we add 82.5. That's gonna give us 232.5, but we can't really have 0.5 of a newt. So in population problems, you always need to round so that you don't have half of an organism. So in this case, we would have 233 newts as the answer to our question. The problems I went over here are likely going to be the kinds of things you'll be asked on the AP Biology exam when it comes to population graphs and population math. Thanks for watching, and make sure you check out some of my other resources if this one's been helpful. I'll see you later.